Since I have my X-Curve CNC machine, I always use the clamps that came with it to securely hold my pieces down to the table. And so far they did a pretty good job. And sometimes also were in the way. They work on a very simple principle as you can see. And also their holding power is really good. But I never really liked these because these adjusting screws for the height in the back are not always easy to reach and sometimes just in the way, I just don't like these. So now I'm making a few new ones. The new design is very similar to the old one, but height adjustment is done by stair ramps. First I need to make these stair ramps, and I made a couple test pieces, first with plywood and a spiral upcut bit, but that ended in terrible tear out, and then I tried a straight bit, and it came out much better, but still not really usable. So next I then tried solid wood, just some scrap spruce I had laying around, and that came out really good. I grabbed another scrap piece, made it flat and square and then cut diagonally through it. With this piece I can now make the big ramps and with the off cut some smaller ramps. I screwed this to another piece of plywood so that I can hold it on the CNC table and... Oh, hopefully this isn't higher than the maximum cutting capacity. Whew. Just clears. Alright, so here are the finished ramps, here's the other set, and I also made another set with even smaller ones, which will probably be the ones which I will use the most, and that's why I made these out of maple. The new matching clamps I'm going to cut out of this piece of maple, and instead of watching the CNC for half an hour, let's do some video magic. After a little bit of cleanup work, this is what they look like, and I again made three different sizes. Not sure which one I will really need, but I should be prepared for everything. To clamp something down, it looks very similar to the old system. And that's secure. The setup time is about the same as with the old ones, but the big advantage is their shape. So the old ones just press down onto the piece, and these ones now press down and also provide a physical side stop, so the piece is much more secure. What I would also like to do with the CNC is to surface work pieces, for example segmented rings or cutting boards. If you've ever made a cutting board, you know that getting the surface smooth is very labor intensive, especially the sanding. So if I could mill a flat surface onto the board before sanding, then the sanding will be quicker and simpler. Obviously I can't use these type of clamps for this because they are always on top of the surface that I want to work on. So therefore I need to make another type of clamp system. My idea for that was to drill a grid of dog holes into the CNC bed which would fit copper pipe. And with these I can then make a bunch of accessories. For now a right angle fence and cam lever clamps. With that I can then put whatever workpiece I have on there and clamp it against the fence which should be secure enough for surfacing. But first I need to drill the dog holes. To drill these new holes into the base plate I made myself a story stick or drill template whatever you want to call it. And with this I should be able to precisely drill into the base plate so that the holes have always the same spacing and are square to each other. And I can easier work on this when it's on my workbench. Now when I made my story stick I accidentally grabbed the 60mm bit instead of the 50mm. But luckily I noticed it early enough before drilling into the board because that would have been a disaster. And when I made the new story stick, I also thought I could go with the 18mm bits and use it with the 18mm copper pipe. And that probably is even better in the end than the 50mm. To avoid chip out on the back, I made the sleeve to go over the drill bit, which will limit my depth of cut. And with it, I can't drill any deeper than that. Now I can put a piece of pipe in the hole. And a story stick. And then I can line it up with the edge of the board and clamp it secure. 
With another pipe I can then mark and drill the remaining holes of this row. Now we need to set the story stick so that it's square to the first row of holes and I'm pretty sure that the board itself is square so I again use the edge as my reference. I again drilled all the holes and repeated on the other side. Alright and now with the third row done I have a perfect guidance for my story stick and can drill the remaining holes. So after another 90 holes I'll be back. Well, that made quite a mess, but all the holes are done and I finished them from the back to get clean holes. So now I can put it back on the machine. Now one question there might be is, why didn't I let the CNC cut all these holes? And that is a really good question. I thought it couldn't reach all the holes and so I didn't even think about it. But as it turns out now, it could have, so... Uh, well... Whatever, now they're already done. Alright, with the baseboard back in place, I can now cut out the other clamping stuff. I've cut four cam levers and a right angle fence in three different thicknesses and also cut the copper pipe to size. And well now it's just a matter of putting it all together. I made the fences with multiple holes because I didn't know from the beginning which one would be the best position. But now after a little testing it turns out that the middle one is the best. Some of the pipes are also needed to glue in place. The way this is supposed to work is you just grab a fence, put it in place, take whatever workpiece you have, grab a cam and a spacer to protect the edge and then clamp it. Very quick to set up. But when I was testing this I noticed that my cam levers don't work. They can't hold the pressure and always let go on their own. At first I thought the size of this head here just being a little too big. So I made one with a smaller head and it was a little better but still let go sometimes. So then I took a closer look at what's happening there and figured out that I need to change the shape of the head and came up with this. As you can see it's really not much different but it makes a big difference. As you can see with this shape I can clamp it and it stays clamped. Fortunately all I have to do now to fix this issue is to take my working cam, put it on top of the others and flush trim it to the correct shape. Now it would be really practical if I had someone who would do that for me while I explain why this shape is working and this is not. Fortunately, come in. What's up? I have work for you. What work? You know what it is. I just explained and you are me. You're just wearing another shirt. Yeah, I know. I just thought it was funny confusing you. <laughs> yeah, really funny. Can you please shut the door? Yes, he can hear that. Imagine this being a spacer piece or something you want to clamp and watch how it moves when you turn the cam. So it moves a little bit, a little bit, a little bit and then suddenly a lot and then again a little bit, a little bit. And with this design it moves consistently at the same rate as you can see. The question there is, why does this affect the functionality? The unfortunate side effect of it moving a little bit, a lot and a little bit is that also the contact point here moves away from the pivot center, which is here. To understand why this is the problem, I put this piece as an example next to it. So now when the cam is in the start position, the contact point is aligned with the pivot point. It's like when I'm pressing in the center here. And of course this won't rotate from pressing here and also the cam stays in place. And when I advance the cam, you can see that the contact point is shifted from the pivot point. It's like when I'm pressing here on this piece. Now it's still not rotating because friction is high enough, but once the contact point is too far from the pivot point, it will start to rotate, like when I'm pressing here on this piece, and the cam lever also rotates. And that's why it comes loose on its own. The reason why this shape is working, you can see that the contact point is not aligned with the pivot point, but it's just a little bit, so friction is big enough. And as you can see, when you advance the cam, the contact point stays at the same place. So friction is always big enough. 
And that's why this is working. And that's all there is to it, all based on enough friction. If there was no friction, then these kind of cam levers wouldn't work at all. You may now also ask how to design these. So this one is really simple. It's just a circle with the hole off center. And it's also really useful if you close something always all the way. Like a toggle clamp. You always press the handle down completely and then it stays locked. If you clamp something with this always all the way, over this point here, then it will also stay locked. But in this application, where you never know where it will end up, you need the other design. On this one, the clamping surface is based on the pivot point, so that the distance to it increases evenly. And that's the whole secret. I still need to make some dedicated spacer pieces, but that's not really interesting, so let's try it out. So this is straight after surfacing, very flat and there won't be much sanding left to do. As a comparison this is before and after. And the best thing is that it's not as dusty as sanding only. Alright, so the concept works pretty well actually. And this clamping system could also be used on any workbench with dog holes. So if you're interested you can find free templates for these cam levers in the video description. One thing for sure, this will save me a little bit of time and a lot of sanding dust for future rings for segmented bolts, cutting boards or anything else that's difficult to surface. All in all, after a little bit of fiddling, a successful project. And instead of watching the CNC for half an hour, let's do some video magic. Um, well, fail. That wasn't supposed to happen. So if the CNC could mill the surface flat before sanding, then the sanding will be much quicker and much less time consuming. That's actually the same. So therefore I have to make another design of clamps. Another type. Ugh. And with it I should be able to drill the holes precisely so that they are always, so that they have always the same spacing. Oh, 